Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. It's been a little while since I uploaded some videos. Uh, let's go over some stuff real quick. Uh, kind of explain why I've been absent, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, I live in the central United States, and we had some pretty horrendous storms blow through a month and a half ago. And really displaced a lot of my friends and displaced some of my family. So, for a while, my home was actually home to family and friends that had been affected by these storms. At the same time, I was in the process of actually moving. So I had to move, had family and friends that were needing a place to stay. I mean, these storms were devastating. Tornadoes that pretty much leveled my friends' homes, ripped the roofs off my family's homes. So they were pretty much staying with me for a while. And till they could get back on their feet, get their stuff back together, and, and just kind of get everything together where they could move back into a home where they could take care of themselves. So that kept me away from making videos for a while, but I felt that was more important at the time to be there for my friends and family. And I am sorry I wasn't doing any videos, but I'm back. Uh, I feel much better now. They're in a better place. Plus I had a, a son that graduated from high school, so that took a little bit of my time. But we're back and it's almost summer. And what I want to announce today is the summer of Linux. I'm going to be doing 90 different Linux distros in the summer. And I'm going to change things up a little bit. I'm going to do things a little different. Uh, as opposed to me doing an 8 to 10 minute video just covering a distribution and going over it, we're going to actually look at a distribution, we're going to install the distribution, we're going to update that distribution, and then I'm going to give you tips on things that you need to do after you install that distribution to kind of make your life a little easier. These videos for the Summer of Linux will be sponsored by Tuxedo Computers. I'm not going to do a bunch of uh, advertisements pushing and pushing Tuxedo Computers, but I do want to say if you're somebody that likes Linux and you want a Linux-focused hardware, Tuxedo Computers is pretty awesome. Uh, it makes things easy. I'm actually using this Tuxedo Computer that I've been using for the last almost five months now. Uh, to cover different Linux distributions and Tuxedo has provided me with a Polaris 15 Gen 4 AMD with an NVIDIA graphics card to do my gaming series on which will also be going over in the summer. I will be covering different ways to use just basic Linux games or uh, Steam games. I'm going to cover everything there is to cover with Linux and gaming and the best part of it is is when I get done with that gaming series that Polaris 15 is going to be given away to a viewer. That's in conjunction with Tuxedo. They said they wanted to back this gaming uh, video series. and But what they wanted to do was, at the end of it, be able to give the hardware away that's actually being covered in the video. So, I will get back with you and find out how I can do that without breaking YouTube's rules or YouTube's you know handcuffs on giving things away. And also, if you notice, this video started without no intro. I'm not going to do the fancy intro anymore. I'm not going to do the outro. If you want to support the channel, you can. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel, or you can become a member for 99 cents. It's that simple. So now let's go ahead and get over to MX Linux. Now if you go over to MX Linux's website, which is mxlinux.org, you can go to the download, and what's beautiful about it now is they actually give you the option to download the XFCE, KDE, or the Fluxbox edition. Now the XFCE does come uh, with a standard 64-bit kernel, uh, hardware support for Debian stable, suitable if your PC is a few years old, and you've also got another one containing a 32-bit PAE kernel from Debian stable for suitable systems that are still 32-bit. And that's what I get a lot of times in my comments. People say, I want to use Linux. I have something that I want to use, but it's 32-bit. What do you suggest? I always tell people, go for MX Linux. And then, of course, you've got the MX AHS, which is Advanced Hardware Support. It's released for very recent hardware. 6.0 kernel, newer graphics drivers and firmware. 64-bit only. Works for all users, but especially those that have AMD Ryzen and ADM Radeon graphics or 9th, 10th, and 11th gen Intel hardware. Now, I'm going to close out of this. And if you boot into it off of a USB, this is the screen you're met with. Now, if you want me to go over how to download it and put it on a USB, I have covered that in previous videos. But if you would like me to do a video about that again, please 
Drop that in the comments below and I will cover it again. You get your welcome screen, MX21.3 Wildflower. And you got your Conky over here. We're using 1% of the hard disk drive, memory is 14%, CPU 0. So when you come to this screen, really what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and close out of this. And let's go ahead and go to the installer. It'll check your installation media real quick. Doesn't take too long at all. And then there you go. It got your keyboard, your layout. You can go ahead and click on next. It's going to go ahead and use the 30 gigabyte hard drive that I've got. I'm not going to encrypt it. So let's go ahead and go next. Yes, it's okay to format it. So let's go ahead and let it format that real quick. Now you can change your computer name if you would like. It takes a little bit to copy your system files. Not near as long as something like a Windows or a or a Mac. I have a friend the other day, they were actually staying here while their home was getting their roof fixed on it, and he had a Mac and he went to update it. Boy, it was a nightmare. I watched him sit there and fight that thing for an hour, hour and a half, and I was like, man, you just need to switch Linux. It makes things a whole lot easier. He didn't listen. He's a Mac boy, so there wasn't much I could do about that. So now it's pause for require operator input. Let's go ahead and click next. United States, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go ahead and change the time zone to Chicago because that will be my time zone. Let's go ahead and go next. Default user login. Let's go ahead and just put eBuzz. Uh, default password. And go ahead and do that again. It's weak, but I'm not worried about that. And I'll go ahead and make a root. No, I don't need that. Let's go ahead and click next. Now it's repairing the installation, installing Grub, updating it. Doesn't take too long to install at all, guys. It really doesn't. So we'll let that go through everything there. I'm sorry, somebody is messaging me. Answer that right now. Sorry, my phone went off in the background. It sure is nice to be back. It sure is nice to be able to get in my room and sit down and make a video. So right now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reboot this system and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we have rebooted. We have MX Linux installed. I like the MX welcome screen here, but the first thing I really want to go over is we've installed it, so now what we really need to do is go ahead and let's update it. So let's go over here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up a terminal. Let's go ahead and pull up the XFC terminal, and what you're going to want to do right here, I'm going to go ahead and close that welcome screen. Then we can come up here, and we're going to want to upgrade it or update it, upgrade, whatever you want to call it. So let's go sudo apt get update, okay, space, and then sudo apt get upgrade. Go ahead and hit enter. It's going to want your password. Put your password in, hit enter, and it'll go through and update the system for you. Now you can do this from a graphic user interface, but I think if you're getting into Linux, learning these little commands like this will help you in the long run. I tell people all the time, you can install Linux without ever having to go into the terminal, but sometimes you just need to get in there, type some things in, get, get work done, and learn how to use the terminal. It's going to do nothing but help you in the long run. And MX Linux, it's pretty user friendly. Let's go ahead and continue that, and we'll go ahead and let that update in the background. This shouldn't take too long, but I will let it run its course and I'll be back with you when it's done. Okay, as you can see, we are done. Processing triggers, everything is finished there, so we can close out of the terminal. So now we've installed MX Linux and it's completely up to date. Now you can go down here if you want to and kind of look through the tools that you have. Uh, you've got accessories, you got your development, Genie icon browsers, you got a few games, graphics, Lazy Paint, LibreOffice Draw, Internet. You've got MX Viewer, Firefox, Multimedia, Alsa Mixer, MX Tools. MX Tools will definitely go over in a little bit. But right now, generally what people do, well, what I do, and I think what a lot of us do is say, okay, it's time to install some software. So you go over here, you got your MX Package Installer, and you have Synaptic Package Manager. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the MX one real quick because it's real handy and it makes things really easy, especially if you need to install a lot of applications all at once. You can go up here, uh, like here it's got, if you want a Sunder, you could choose it, Clementine. You can come up here and pretty much pick out everything that you want to install and install it all at once. Or, let's go ahead and pull that back up. Let's look up Synaptic. 
you've got Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. This usually means that another package... Oh, I'm sorry. I left that open. Let's go ahead and close that. Close that. Let's click on that. Let's go ahead and put in our password and open up Synaptic. And Synaptic pops up. Let's say you were looking for something like Chromium. You could click on that. There's Chromium right there. You can install it from right here. But I want to show you something real quick. Uh, like I said, if you're not comfortable, this kind of helps you get comfortable. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Let's open that terminal up. Let's drag it down here. And let's say you wanted to install something like GIMP. Let's say you want to do some graphics. Sudo apt install GIMP. Hit enter. Put in your password. Gives you all your information. The following additional packages. Tells you what packages will be installed. New packages that will be installed. You click yes. And it will go out there and install GIMP. That quickly from the terminal. Now you can do it from the MX install. Or you can do it from Synaptic Package Manager. This just gives you a different way to do it from terminal. And start feeling a little bit more comfortable using that terminal. And it's done. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go down here. And let's go ahead and search GIMP. There it is right there. Let's open it up. It should open up really quick. And there you go. You've got GIMP installed and you did that from terminal. Something as simple as sudo apt install and then the package name. So if you're very familiar with Linux, you know that. If you're somebody new, hopefully you've learned something right there. Now another thing you can do is it, it comes with the XFC desktop and it's really kind of tweaked uh, to MX's liking they want to get it out there for you and you can reach your application see i keep going down here to get to my applications but you don't got to do that you can do it from right up here and you can get all the applications that you need right down here now one of the things i want to point out is you do have mx tools and i think you definitely need to take advantage of the mx tools because it makes your life a whole lot easier uh, live usb maker let's say you want to give a different linux distribution a shot you can come over here download it Go to the live USB maker and it'll take care of everything right there. You've got your snapshot. Create a live ISO snapshot of your running system. This is what I really like to do. Is like When you get your system up and you really like it, you can create a snapshot, throw it on a USB, give it to one of your friends and say, Hey, this is what I'm using. Check this out. Or you can put it on a live USB and take it with you. But you've got a lot of things over here. You've got your Samba config, your CH root, about MX Linux, Codex installer, NVIDIA driver installer. So if you're having any trouble with MX Linux at all, this is where you come to. And this is where you can make a lot of different changes to your system if you want to. Package installer right here, deb installer. So you've got different ways to do different things. It really makes your job easy. Now, another thing, let's say you're somebody that wants to use flat packs. If you want to use flat packs, there's different ways that you can install flat packs on here i don't really cover snaps if you want me to cover snaps in a video i will but it's really simple if you come down here you can go over here you can go sudo or sudo oh my bad i need the terminal first sorry about that guys um xfc terminal getting a little ahead of myself there come up here let's go sudo apt install flat pack Let's go ahead and put in my password. Boom. Flat pack is now available. Okay, now that we have the flat packs enabled, what you can do is come right down here. Let's go to the MX package installer. Let's go ahead and put in our super secret password. Let's open that up. And we're right back here to your package. You've got enabled MX Debian backports flat packs. Click on it. MX Linux includes this repository for users, convenience only, and is not responsible. Basically, what they're telling you, hey, if you install flat packs on here and something goes wrong, don't call us. Call Fl call Flathub. Get with flat packs. Okay, so let's close that. Let's let it refresh itself. Let's go ahead and put in our password. And what it'll do is it's syncing up right now everything from the Flathub with the MX package installer. Makes it simple. Makes it sweet makes it easy to use and there you go you are now synced with the flat hub so any flat packs that are available that you can run on mx linux you can do a search for if you wanted to there's cody tb.cody.cody .cody, uh gimp 
Gimp's available in a flat pack. I believe MailSpring is available in a flat pack, which is completely open source now. Great email program. So that's pretty much it. You've got everything installed. You've got an updated system. You can go in and download all the applications you want. If you can't find those applications and you want to get it from flat packs, we've enabled that. I've showed you how to do that. And let's close out of this. And really what it comes down to now is just you personalizing your system. You can customize your keyboard shortcuts if you want to. Install your favorite browser extensions. Configure a firewall. Maybe configure your power management. And then, of course, customize it and install themes if you want to use those or different wallpapers. But that's pretty much it. There's a lot more that you can go in depth with this on but really just doing a quick install doing an update uh, showing you how to install the applications that you want or need uh, showing you how to do that in terminal showing you how to enable flat packs and then everything else really if you want to change your backgrounds themes and stuff like that that is really up to you and you can just get in here and really customize everything but i just wanted to go over the install show you how easy that was show you how easy it was to Go ahead and update your system. Go ahead and show you how easy it was to enable flat packs. And just kind of show you how to get this system set up to the way you like it. If you want to see something more in depth about MX Linux, please drop that in the comments below. And like I said, I'm glad to be back. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Sorry I was gone for so long, but it is the summer of Linux. We've got 90 distros that we're going to cover in this summer. And we've got a gaming series on Linux and Tuxedo Computers is going to sponsor a giveaway of a laptop that we're going to use on those. So anyway, thank you guys so much. If you like this video or if you think there's something I missed in this video, please drop that in the comments below. If you want to subscribe, that helps me out a lot. And if you want to become a member, it only costs 99 cents. Thank you guys. God bless you. And I will see you later.